proper, proper afraid. Yeah, I was proper scared. And um, because he would tell me, oh, you know, I know a lot of people, my clients, <laughs> I have clients in prison that owe me a big favor because I didn't do it long term. And I'll just waste you. I'll just waste you. And nothing's going to happen. <laughs> I got to the stage, I said, you know what, I'm ready to die. I'm not coming back to you, period. And he said, okay, we'll see about that. And I went back to uni because I, I wanted to know why people behave the way they do. What's wrong? So I remember the first time, the, I was still allowing him to see the kids. He would come and pick the kids up for weekends and, and all that. And the kids told him, and they said, oh, mom, mom got into university. She's doing um, psychosocial, because I did psychosocial studies. They said, oh, that's for mad people. It's not a normal cost. Psychology is for crazy people. It's for mad people. That's, that's you know, please. I hope none of you is going to grow up to say you want to do psychology. You're not going to do anything with it. And so that's what he put in my kids. Because even till now, when I tell them, oh, you know, I want you to do psychology. They're like, no, 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 no. That's for mad people. <laughs> We're not going to do that. And, uh, you know, we continued. But then he would bring his girlfriend to drop off the kids mm -hmm. in my house. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, so one day I said, can we just go for a divorce? He said, you can't divorce me. I own you. In my property. Yeah. Divorce me. Are you for real? I said, but you've, you've moved on. You're living with another woman in your house. He said, so? So, you're not in the house anymore. There has to be a woman in my house. What was the problem with that? And I'm like, so we need to divorce. He said, first and foremost, you can't divorce me. And second, even if you divorce me, your life is over. No man's going to talk to you. Which man's going to want a woman with three kids? You know? Or you think because you've gone to university that you're intelligent. You're not intelligent. And uh, where? You're in University of East London. That's an Islamic school. <laughs> that's not even a university. That's, that's, that's just a school. Oh, really? I'm thinking, okay, fine. No problem. And I just said, well, please, next time you want to pick or drop the kids, don't come to my house with your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sometimes he would pick the kids. He would my my little one has nut allergy. He would pick the kids and he would give them crunchy nuts cereal and bring them back, and that one would have, you know, an inflammation or something. First time I told him, I said, "Please, this boy does not do nuts. Don't give him nuts." Oh, I forgot. Okay, fine. N sometime. I think his girlfriend, one of his girlfriends is a Ghanaian because he has a lot of them. And that one came and she made granite soup. And obviously they fed my baby granite soup. And then the baby started coming out with rashes and he didn't know what to do. So he brought the baby home immediately. So I said, but why are you bringing him home? Why didn't you just take him to the hospital? Oh, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't even know. I'm not interested. Sort him out. I'm like, well, you gave... Anyway, I had to rush my child to the hospital because that was more important. And I told them in the hospital that, look, you know, he gave him granite soup. The other kids told me what happened. So I told them in the hospital. Again, <laughs> they raised another issue, social services, again. And this time I said, you know what? I don't know what to do with this guy. I don't even know how to deal with him. I'm tired. Can you guys just, whatever you want to do, as long as you don't take my kids away from me. And yeah. social, the social worker started again, and um, he said, oh, well, there's no um, child arrangement order, so he has rights to see his children. Well, if I, if, 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 he, if I feel he's not taking good care of the kids, why do I keep sending them back? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I said, well, the pastor told me, you had a meeting, and the pastor keeps telling me all those things, and obviously you're working with the pastor, and he said, oh, well, if you're listening to the pastor, then you're stupid. Really? Okay, fine. So, I had to tell the kids. At one point, I said, you know what? Um, do you really want to go see daddy? And they said no. 
and they told me why because obviously his girlfriend's kids were bullying them and stuff like that and there was always fights going on and so <laughs> one major incident when I, I think the kids had an issue with the other ladies kids and there was a fight and the kids came and said they're not going there they, mom can you come we need to take our things from that house we don't want to go there anymore so I said, okay. So we went to that house, knocked at the door. Girlfriend comes, opens the door, slams the door at my face. Um, I knocked again. He opened the door. Yes, what do you want? I said, okay, can I have the kids' clothes? You know, because they don't want to come here anymore because this, this happened and that, that happened. Oh, everything I buy for them stays in my house. You can go to your charity shop and buy them anything you want to buy for them. I've already told them that you can't take care of them. You're poor, and you're very, very needy, and you don't even know what you're doing. So I said, but their school bag, you didn't buy them. I bought them. Can I have their school bag and stuff? He now goes into the house. He tells his kids, go in, go, go look for your bag, and, and, and take your bag, and, and come and get out of my house. So he goes inside and closes the door. And I, I hit at the door and I said, please, can you leave the door open? While the kids are in there, I want to know that they are safe to come out. So he pushed me and slammed the door. So I fell, got up. I took a pebble, like, you know, like those pebbles that protect the garden, the flowers and stuff. It wasn't like a stone. So I started hitting it at the door and I said, open this door. I want to make sure the kids are okay. So he comes out. He says, how dare you? You basically damaged my property. I said, I didn't damage any property. Just open the door. I want my kids out. So he gets my son, pushes him out of the, you know, gets my daughter, pulls her, pushes her out, dislocates her arm. She falls over and starts crying. I'm thinking, God, what did I do? So my daughter was crying. So apparently her shoulder had just dislocated. So in confusion, I just took her. He said, oh, you know, I just took her, put her in the car, went straight to the hospital. In the hospital, she got admitted because they had to fix her arm and stuff like that. And um, the police came to the house to look for me. I wasn't home, so they dropped a note. I was in the hospital for about two days, yeah? My neighbor had come to take the boys. So I come back, like, I think it was on a Wednesday morning, Wednesday night. Thursday morning, like 6 a.m., I see, like, two police vans in front of the house. that um, we are arresting you for um, damaging, uh, criminal damage to a private property. I'm like, criminal damage me? They said, yes. Did you um, use a stone to hit the door? I said, yes. They said, well, you've destroyed the door to the tune of 5,000 pounds. <laughs> I said, no, I didn't destroy the door. There was no mark on the door. I said, well, we got a call. And we have a, um, a note, and we hear you're very, very violent, that you have mental health issues, you've been on um, some strong medication in the past, and so you're not reasoning normal. So that's why, you know, six of us are here to restrain you. Like me, I'm like, I had cancer and I was on strong painkillers, but it didn't affect me in any way. So, oh, well, um, and he called, he mentioned my drugs. And he said, well, it affects you. <coughs> so, <coughs> anyway, I get arrested. <coughs> I get arrested. I get locked up. <coughs> I got locked up for 12 hours. That is the most humiliating, very humiliating. They wanted to handcuff me. And the lady said, you can clearly see that this is an issue of domestic violence. You, you saw the notes, you saw her name. And you know that she left the house. There is no way we can handcuff her, not in front of her children. 
she's not violent. I'm gonna escort her upstairs. She's gonna change, and she's gonna pull us to the station. I'm not gonna allow you to do that. <laughs> so she followed me upstairs. And they now bring out a long letter that he did. I came, I'm, I'm an estranged wife, I'm violent. I came to attack him and his girlfriend. And I said, no, but this is what happened. I actually came back from the hospital last night. I showed you, I showed them that this is what I came back with from A&E. And &E. And they said, oh, well, um, sorry, he made the report. Someone say no sound for me. Can you hear me? Guys? Victoria. Yeah. No sound. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear? Guys? Anyway. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. They there is sound, yeah, that's cool. Just leave it. If, if you can't hear sound, there's sound, watch, yeah, okay. Back. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so um that was it. Went to the station in Bromley, locked me up. Um I had to look for a duty solicitor or something. And um I had to call my brother, my my half brother, and then he got someone who came to the station to bail me. But this man put a clause and said that I cannot leave the station unless they contact him. So he wants to decide if he's going to take me to court or I'm going to pay damages. And I told the policeman, I said, I lived in that house for 12 years. And I think I still have a right to that property as a wife. And I told the policeman, I said, but we are not even divorced yet. So I'm not understanding what he's doing. I did not touch him. I banged the door. And this man has been beating me all these years. And I have never, ever for one day called the police. Because I am too afraid. And they're like, oh, well, next time. You call the police and uh, we'll sort it out. I said, but well, I'm always afraid because he's a lawyer. He says um, he's a duty solicitor to a lot of police stations. So me calling the police, the police is his friend. And the policeman said, well, not all of us are his friends. I, I'm not his friend. I don't know him, but you understand. <laughs> anyway, so they couldn't reach the... So my duty solicitor had to say, look, if she stays here for more than 12 hours, then we're going to sue. Because we don't understand why he is not picking his phone. This girl has been here since 6 a.m. And it's 12 and my kids are home. Right? A friend of mine came from Nigeria. So I had to beg her, Joy. I had to beg her to, you know, when she called me from me, I said, okay, go to the house. My neighbor is at home. 